was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome to Perfected Praise Worship Outreach Center at the Meadows. We are a church and community for the community. We are located at 31042 Smith's Ferry Road in Franklin, Virginia. Join us at 1045 a.m. every Sunday for worship service or join us here online for virtual worship. We love to have you in the midst. What a day this is. Yes. A day ordained by God. Yes. Are we not blessed yes. to be here, to be able to partake of this day? Yes. For it is the day that God designed just for me and you. Yes. We are celebrating Mother's Day. Yes. We are celebrating Mother's Day. Father, 
Father, to nurture those that need it, Father. And I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Dear Father, those are on the airways who need a message, Father, just some comforting, Father, for they may have lost their mother. They may have separated from their mother, Father, but this message is Father, for the message that is to come, Father. Thank you, Father, for those that are on their way, Father. Let them have safe passage to whatever house of worship they are headed to, Father. Dear Father, thank you for your grace and mercy today, Father. Thank you for your filling up, for we are thirsty and hungry just for your word, dear Father. Thank you Father, for this day, these things I say in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We bless God for another Mother's Day yes. that He's allowed us to see, and we thank God for mothers. Mothers are special people, and as I was thinking today, I believe that a mother's love is the closest to God's love. Because there's no love like the love of a mother. I thank God for my mother. I thank God for a grandmother. And I know some of you all have that same testimony. Uh, a mother or a mother figure or a grandmother. I thank God for a grandmother, a friend, grandmother, and for the mother figures in my life. So let's give God a hand clap of praise for mothers.
us. Thank God blesses us even when we joined us. We ask that you would share with friends and start a watch party. Don't be selfish with the blessing. Isn't that an awesome God that we serve on today? And he spared us to see another blessed Sabbath today. Thank you, Lord. He blessed us to see another Mother's Day. And we are grateful and we thank him for it. And now we have your Bibles. That's a scripture this morning found in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. And I shall begin reading at verse 8 from the The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, Indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me and afterward, Make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household eight for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the job or run dry according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. The word of God for the people of God. And the word of God is already blessed. Let us pray. Our wise eternal God, our heavenly Father, here we stand behind this sacred desk to proclaim what thus saith the Lord. Father God, I ask that you anoint the ears of your hearers, that your people, God, will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to his people. Anoint my lips, God, that as I press my ear to your lips, that I will only speak that which you would have me to say. Speak, Lord, speak. 
that your servant may hear. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said amen. Amen, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And if I were to choose a topic, the topic would be a mother's faith in troubled times. A mother's faith in troubled times. Today we celebrate mothers, whether biological mothers, surrogate mothers, godmothers, foster mothers, play mothers, or however you choose to refer to the mother or mother figure in your life. We salute you today and we honor you because it is a blessing that God chose you to impart into the life of a child. We realize that it is an awesome responsibility to rear a child. Without it, God would not have given you that assignment if he for one moment thought you could not handle it. Am I right about it? He entrusted that child or children to you to care for him or her for at least 18 years, regardless of the circumstances in which you find yourself in. Oftentimes, we as parents say babies come into the world with no instruction manual. It's trial and error as we go. Amen. Anybody been there, done that? Amen. As a matter of fact, I just shared those same words with some parents on yesterday. However, the Holy Spirit quickened me later and reminded me that I spoke an untruth. The Bible is our manual and offers the following instructions. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. That may be found in Proverbs chapter 22, verse six. Ephesians 6, 4 says, fathers, do not exasperate, frustrate, or anger your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instructions of the Lord. The Holy Bible is our teaching manual, our instruction for rearing our children. And if we live by it and serve as role models of it before our children, the more likely they will follow suit, if not sooner than later, eventually. Amen. You did, you did hear me say eventually. You cannot compromise the word of God and expect your children to walk by it. Amen. Remember, your children are watching you. They are listening to you. They have to see you live it out. Your children have to see you live this word out, this word that you're trying to instruct them with. You, they got to see you living according to this word in order for them to want to walk that same path that you are walking. Amen? Amen? And guess what? We're going to have to give an account to God for how we rear our children, believe it or not. It's about being faithful. It's about being obedient to God's word. So I say to you as parents, keep the faith. Amen. In our lesson, our text this morning, we see the worship of the true God was at an all-time low. It was almost gone. The state of spiritual affairs were very dim. So the prophet Elijah, a prophet of God, declared a three-year drought over the land of Israel. Remember, Israel was God's chosen land and chosen people. But they had begun to worship idol gods. And it grieved the prophet's heart. God stopped the rain in the land and told the prophet Elijah to move away from King Ahab and that place and to go to a solitary hiding place. Here God commanded the brook to give Elijah water in the midst of the drought. And he instructed the ravens to bring Elijah food. God will protect his own church. Amen. In, in, in the midst of a drought, in the midst of a pandemic, God will take care of his own. Amen. God sent Elijah to this secluded place 
where he could not be disturbed, it would be just Elijah and God. And sometimes we wonder, God, why you have me in this place, which seems like a lonely place, a deserted place. But God has a way of getting our attention. Even if he has to take us to a, a dry desert place, amen? amen? Where there's nobody but you and God, so that you can hear clearly what God is saying. Amen. So Elijah, God wanted Elijah to hear him and to hear him well. When it was time for Elijah to move on to his next assignment, God allowed the brook, the brook to dry up again so that Elijah would stay there. Here we see that God was guiding Elijah. In the midst of your trials and your tribulations of life, and you wonder sometimes, where is God? You need to know today that God is there. He's Jehovah Shammah. He promised he would be with there through through the good and the ugly and the bad. Amen? Amen. God provided the brook. He it up because he no longer needed it. God was strategically leading Elijah to his place of assignment. I came back to let somebody know this morning that whether it looks like it or not, whether you realize it or not, God has you on an assignment. You were birthed with purpose. God birthed you intentionally, every one of you, from the youngest of you to the oldest. God has birthed you with purpose. And as long as you live, you need to know that you are on assignment. Is God removing people or rearranging your life so that you can be used more effectively by him? Is God moving stumbling blocks blocks or hindrances from your life? Could it be that some things in your life have come to an end because God is moving you to the next level of him and they couldn't go with you? Yeah. Or they would have brought famine and drought and emptiness rather than productivity to your life? I'm talking to somebody now. Hallelujah. Perhaps God is strategic, strategically guiding you. Yes, yes. Don't interfere let God be God in your life. Amen. By this time, there was a famine in the land because of the lack of rain. God spoke to Elijah again and told him, go to Zarephath, and there you will find a widow woman that he had placed there just for Elijah. God will show up in a least expected moment, and he will bless in a least unexpected way. This is when God brings Elijah and the widow of Zarephath together. God sent Elijah to help this widow woman who was thinking of committing suicide because she didn't have enough food or water for herself nor her son to survive. The love of a mother, the faith of a mother. Amen? Amen. Oftentimes, when there's a drought in our lives, we're in a dry place, an empty desert place. No life, no productivity, no productivity. It appears that all hope is gone. We may feel like giving up, throwing in the towel on life, so to speak. But I came back to let you know this morning that God is saying, trust me. Even when you can't trace me, God is saying, trust me. Me. When it looks like all hope is gone, God is saying, trust me. Yes, yes. Give God a chance to show himself strong in your life, in your children's lives. God is saying, I am here, Jehovah Shammah. Give all your situations over to me. God is concerned about you and all that are attached to you. Like a widow woman. A single parent, not by choice, trying to make provision for her son. A single mom willing to sacrifice all for her child. Yeah. A mother that was willing to take a leap of faith that God would provide. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh. Has he been Jehovah Jireh in your life? Has he shown up when you didn't know how you're going to pay the bills? Oh, yeah. how you, didn't, you didn't know how you're going to feed your children? You didn't know how you're going to pay your water bill? That, that astronomical show up, church, because God is not short of meeting up his word. And if God said it, you can take it to the bank and cash it. Any mother in this place this morning that's willing, like the woman, the widow woman, 
willing to take a leap of faith for what you need in your life, for what you need in your child's life, what you need in your children's lives. Man can be good, but man can't provide us what God can provide us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Elijah asked the widow woman for some bread and water. He asked her to give her what she had prepared as her very last meal. This widow woman was desperately poor. She and her child were literally going to eat this last meal, and then they were going to starve to death. Can you imagine what she must have been thinking as a mother? How can I take from the mouth to feed this man? Unlike so many mothers, I hate to say today, that will rob their children of what the system has provided them with to give to their children. If, I, if we don't eat this, we're going to die. And if we do eat, we're still going to die. Because there's a famine. There's no more vegetation in the land, and the water has dried up. So who is this man who has the audacity to ask me to share with him what was provided for just me and my child? That's a real mother, amen? A real mother that will provide for her children, that will feed for her children, even if she has to go hunger herself. She will say that. I can remember having a mother like that. And I used to wonder why mama always eat by herself after we're eating. We have finished eating. And later in life she said, I will make sure that you children ate just in case there was nothing left. You have been fed. And I will find something to feed. And this was this lady, this widow woman observed that. She was concerned that she was alone, no help, no spouse, no boo, nobody to come to her rescue. And there was nothing left but just enough for she and her child. And this prophet, she knew he was a man of God, is asking her to share with him what has been provided for she and her son. But not only did he ask her to share? He also instructed her according to the word of God. He said to her, don't be afraid. How many of you know sometimes fear will overtake you? And you can't even think rationally. You can't even make wise decisions. And if you're in that state, sometimes we make foolish mistakes because we don't have the ability to think wisely. Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me, for what you have, and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel said. The jar of flour would not be used up, and the jug of oil would not run dry until the day the Lord sent rain on the land. Now it took some faith for Elijah and to believe what God said. Here, this mother was only enough food to feed her child. And her child in the natural. She had a choice. Sisters and friends, God will bring you to that crossroad where you have to make a decision. Is it going to be this or is it going to be God? Am I going to do this or am I going to do that? What is best for me and my children or am I going to do elsewise? He brought her to that crossroad. Hallelujah. She had a choice to make. Amen. Was she going to make believe what the prophet said? Or was she going to believe that what the prophet said that God said? Amen. Amen. My Bible tells us oh, better, it's better to obey God than man. Amen. But this was a woman of faith. Do I have any mothers in the house today that are mothers of faith? Yes. And you know it was only faith that brought you your children through. Hallelujah. You know it was only your Amen. Amen. She knew that God would no doubt 
watch over his word and make it come to pass. And I want to remind you today, God is still God. And God is still performing his word. Amen. He said, my word will not return to me void, but I will accomplish it for the purpose of which I sent it. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Maybe somebody viewing from my Facebook family. But be encouraged. Because God is still on the throne. Yes, he is. Yes. What happens when a mother's faith, faith is exercised? Because truly this widow, this widow mother had to exercise her faith. When she gave from her little, God multiplied it and made it much. She gave in spite of her need. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. Yeah. Anybody ever dealt with a little bit and somehow it appeared that God multiplied it and he kept on multiplying it and when you thought it was just a little it wouldn't be enough, you had more than enough you had over. Hallelujah. Only God. Amen. Amen. This widow woman saved her life, her son's life, and she saved the prophet's life. Amen? Amen? Because she was obedient to the word of God. And God is able to do the same for you this morning. When Elijah acknowledged that her food would not run out, she stepped out on faith. Trust in God and used the last bit of oil and flour that she possessed. God is no respect of person this morning. Yes. Whatever you're in need of today, God is able, church. Yes. He is a provider. And my Bible says that my God will meet all your needs yes. according to the riches of glory in Christ Jesus. Yes. But he does not want us to be selfish with what he provides us with. Yes. God does not want us withholding from him. Not the church, not the pastor, but withholding from God. The one who made it possible. The one that made it happen for you. We hold on to what we have so tightly that God can't get to it to multiply back into our lives. Because and we remember we serve a God of multiplication. And that that you give in the name of Jesus, he's going to get it back to you and even more. Amen? Amen. He said, he gives seed. He gives seed to the sword. Hallelujah. Are you a sower this morning? Are you a sower? Or are you holding on to what belongs to God? You have to release it for God to operate in it. Amen? Amen. You have to release it. You have to let it go in order for God to operate in it. Amen. Holding on to it, decreasing it. Give it away in the name of Jesus, multiplies it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yet Elijah was with her and her son for two years. And God provided for them daily, church. Amen. God wants us to trust him just like the widow woman trusted him. He wants us to trust him to take care of us and our children. And not only our children, but our children's children. Amen. Amen. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see big and bread. God wants us to lean and depend on him with all of our might, with all of our soul. He wants us to depend on him with an abiding trust, a trust that is ever present in your life, a trust that does not waver or take a seat back when circumstances arises in our lives. God wants you to trust him and him only completely. Not in man, not in your money, not in your education, but God says, trust me, even when you can't trace me. What happened when a mother's faith is exercised? Fear takes a back seat. Have you ever been in a desperate situation and you didn't know what you were going to do? You didn't know how you were going to handle your situation. You didn't know what to do. And God steps in. He didn't get off the throne and come down and meet you face to face. But he sent somebody your way. He provided through man. And that's how God operates. He's provided man. Amen? Amen? You may be at your last where your money is concerned. And you got a bill due. And God sends an angel. You go to the mailbox. And God does allow checks to arrive in the mail. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. God will meet your need. Amen? But 
you must exercise that faith. When a mother's faith is exercised, fear has to take a back seat. When a widow of Zarephath expressed concern for the small amount of food, Elijah told her, do not be afraid. She was fearful for her child's life as well as her own life. She had no clue as to where to go or what to do next or where the next meal was coming from. All she could see was death facing she and her child. But the prophet, the man of God, reminded her of what God spoke. God said, not me, the prophet, but God said, be not afraid, implying that the Lord thy God is with her. And if God said it, he will perform it. Amen. Anybody believe that this morning? Amen. short of what you ask him to do. As a matter of fact, he provided you with even more. Yeah. That's the kind of God that I serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In order to move forward in obedience, she had to get rid of fear. Fear can be crippling. Yeah. It can cause your life to come to an immediate halt, overshadowing your very being. Limiting your ability to think or see beyond your present situation. So many people are prevented from reaching their goals, accessing their blessings, and living the abundant life because they are scourged. We must remember that God did not give us a spirit of fear, church, but love, power, and a sound mind. That being said, makes us very aware of the author of fear. The one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy God's people. The adversary, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, the devil, the liar. Yeah. He is the giver of fear. But Jesus said, and this counteracts counteract anything and everything that the devil can do. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I came that you may have abundant life. Therefore, we must exercise our faith over fear. No matter what it looks like, no matter what the doctor's report says, no matter what you're feeling like, it's faith is not about a feeling, church. It's about what you can believe that God is capable of doing in your life. Amen? Amen. And finally, what happens when a mother's faith is exercised? she realizes that she is not alone. Yes. So often mothers feel they have a unique challenge in that they feel alone in parent or single. Where there may be a two-parent family, the dad is so occupied with work, the real the children are left to the mother. The single mother is overwhelmed because she is toughing it alone and having to do it all. But I came by to let you know this morning that you are not alone. Yes. You do not have to face these challenges alone. You, you don't have to allow yourself to become overwhelmed with the responsibility of being a mother. God promised that he would provide. Yes. And he is still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord thy God that provided for his people. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But guess what? You have to invite him in to assist you. He will come along aside of you and do what you need him to do and what you ask him to do for you and your children. God will even provide the necessary tools to accomplish what you're trying to achieve. But you have to invite him in. You have to invite him into your life and into your children's lives. For this may seem a little frightening to some mothers because you may feel you will lose control of your child or your children. But I came back to let you know that's contrary to what you believe. In other words, you're going to gain the control and the respect and all that you need if you allow God to be God in your child's life. Amen? Amen. If you would release the apron string, if you would take your hands off that child and freely let that child go and let God have that child, you will be amazed at what God is able to do. But I decree and I declare to you that God can do far and exceed more than what you could ever do in your child's life. Amen? Amen. Because we reach a point sometimes that just seem hopeless. We feel helpless. Yeah. And we cry out to God, God, what can I do? I've done everything I can do. We've been everywhere. I've taken the child everywhere. I know to take the child. Yeah. And instead of getting better, things seem to get worse. Oh but God is 
saying, have you tried me? Yes. Hallelujah. Have you tried me? Hallelujah. Yes. My God. God saw the plight of this widow mother. And God sees your plight. God knows your emotions. He knows what you're feeling. Yes. He knows that time that you feel like it's, it's, it's hopeless. You feel like nobody understands what you're going through. But God said, I understand. And I'm here. If you invite me in. God is able to help you through. He sent the widow woman her help through the prophet. And in return, she was able to even help the prophet. Isn't that something? Yeah. Our God is a God of restoration, church. Yeah. Yeah. God will restore you to hold. to steal, kill, and destroy. Did you hear what I said? The enemy comes to steal your joy, to destroy your life. He doesn't want you to experience the good life that only God can offer us. Amen? Amen. And what always looks good is not good. Amen. But if it's godly, it's the best thing that could ever happen for you. Amen. God is no respect of person. What God does for one, he will do the same for another. If you will allow him, if you will invite him in, and if you rem will remember that you are not alone. God sent his son Jesus to mend a broken heart. He sent his son Jesus to restore sight to the blind. He said, I came to preach deliverance to those that are in captivity. In captivity to the thoughts in your mind of what the enemy is making you think that you can do. He came to deliver those that are in captivity to sin. God sent his son Jesus to set the captives free. To set you at liberty and to those that are bruised. If you are hurting today, I know a healer. He mends the broken heart. If you are sorrowful, I know a comforter who said, I would not leave you comfortable. I'll send you a comforter. If you are lost, I know someone that can save you. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Yeah. God with us. Yeah. The son of the living God. The creator. The alpha and omega. The beginning and the end. The master. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's everything that you ever hoped for and everything that you ever desired to be. He's mother to the motherless and he's a father to the fatherless. His name is Jesus. And if you don't know him in the pardon of your sin, I'd like to introduce you to him today. He is Jesus, Mary's baby, born in a manger, this earth as a living example, as a role model for us. Amen? And as walking the road as a model for us, he left the legacy of what a Christian life should look like. Amen? Amen. We who are called by his name, Christians. And he has promised us that if we would submit our lives to him, if we will repent of our sin and turn from our wicked ways, he will receive us into this family and we are promised eternal life. And what God is able to do, can't no man undo it. Amen? Amen. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're in the family. You, and you're in a position now to receive what rightfully belongs to you. I give you Jesus. And we thank God that he sent his son Jesus. We thank God that he is a exemplary model yes. of the love of a mother. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this word on today. We thank you, God, how you pointed out 
this widow of Zarephath, this mother God, a single parent who was struggling, who was getting ready to take her last meal and then starve, she and her child, starve to death. But you sent an angel, you sent a prophet, the man of God, with a word in him. We thank you, God, that that word is still true for us today. That your word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you said, fear not. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. We thank you, God. Now, God, we thank you that you've given life to this word. That it may bring life to your people. For that man, woman, boy, or girl, who does not know you're part of their sin, that they now know that there is a savior, there is a deliverer, there is a provider, there is a healer, there is a God, the whole person. Been able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything that we could think or ask. Of course, the power that worked within us, and he's willing to do it for each one of us. So God, we thank you for your son Jesus today the author finisher of our faith, the one who's able to keep us from falling and to bring, present us faultless before an all wise God. We thank you, God, for who you are in all of your glory. Your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let people God say amen. Amen, amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah.
together. We thank God for our Facebook family that have joined us in this worship experience. We say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers and know that God has put his love inside of us that we would demonstrate the love that he has for us toward our children. Amen? Amen and amen. amen. If this word has been a blessing to you, we invite you to sow a seed. But the first seed we want you to sow is the seed of repentance and forgiveness that you may receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That he may invite you into the family and that you may be privileged to the inheritance that will become yours as being a part of the family. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell within. And secondly, we invite you to sow a seed into this fertile ground. Perfected Praise Worship Outreach Center at the Meadows. We are fertile ground. We want to thank those who've already sown seeds. And we pray that you can boast that God returned. He multiplied that which you sown. We want to thank you for the seeds that you've given that have promoted this ministry. Amen? Amen. We thank God for you. We ask that you keep your hand in the hand of Almighty God. To the mothers out there who are going through and struggling, remember, you heard the word today. You are not. Because God is with you. And we invite you back here on next Sunday, same time and same place to the Perfected Praise Worship Outreach Center at the Matters. Have a blessed week. Amen. Amen. Amen.